Look at what's separating us. I know. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> that is a big one. All right, today I am at Gatorland of Central Florida. And I'm not here to take pictures of gators, although the gators are really cool. But this place was built years ago. I think it's the oldest theme park in Orlando. And when they built it, they built it as a habitat for alligators. And nature kind of did its thing. And now there's birds here from all over the place. They come here and nest. And you can get really, really uh, close to them and get some really good pictures and just some cool opportunities to see things you wouldn't see normally. So they offer a photographer's pass so you can come in early before the park opens and when the lighting is really good to get some really good pictures. And right now, there are about maybe a dozen photographers here. So I gotta go join the pack. See ya. So we're in the park. We got here at 7.30 and we have the whole park until 10. So it's just open to photographers from 7.30 to 10. It's 20 bucks to get in. Uh, if it's as good as they say it is, this should be really, really good. This is Gatorland, so check out these baby alligators. This one up here looks like a croc, though. Check them out. <laughs> that is cool. Okay, this is a place you do not want to fall in. Because there's nothing but gators down here. Of course, I, like I said, it's Gatorland. But some of these things are gigantic. Yeah, I think if you go in here, your food... There's just not even a question about it. And man, there's a lot of photographers here. I don't know if you can see them all down there. Let's go see what they're looking at. And of course, I have to take a picture of a gator, specifically the eye. And if you look, you can see me on the safety of the boardwalk reflected in the eye. It's pretty cool. But that's not what's really cool about this picture. This is. Look at the shutter speed. This was handheld at 1 100th of a second with a big massive zoom lens. Granted, it was only at 200 millimeters, but still that shows you how good the vibration reduction works on this Nikon 200-500 millimeter lens. This impressive cattle egret is going to wind up being the star of this video because I got so many excellent pictures of this bird. The sun and the lighting conditions were just right to really light him up and show off all that impressive color. Look at the beak. I've heard a couple people refer to these as candy corn because their beaks look like candy corn. Now I have a question for everybody watching. Is this a male or a female? I don't know. I would assume it's a male um, and this breeding plumage is there to attract a mate. Either way, leave a comment and let me know if this is a male or a female. This impressive little bird also made it to the cover of my new book, Florida Birding, a guide to the best birding locations in the Sunshine State. If you want to go birding in Florida and you want to know where to go, just pick up a copy of the book. Uh, it's got my favorite places to go. I'll put links to where you can purchase the book in the description. You can get it at Amazon or on my website. The amount of birds at this place was just absolutely incredible. The snowy egret was next, showing off some tail feathers. This awesome tricolored heron was next. And as if the colors weren't good enough, look at that feather display. I mean, you can see all of the individual like pieces and groups and then the, the three up top that looks like a mohawk. What a cool looking bird. Check out this great egret with all that awesome breeding plumage. It's sitting over a nest, and if you look real close, you can see some blue eggs down there. Here's a different perspective for you. Bird profile shots are pretty common, but when you look at them straight on, man, they look weird. Look at that. Man, he's going to put somebody's eye out with that beak. I would say if you have a fear of alligators, this is not the place for you. Of course, I've got to have some bird and flight shots because bird and flight shots are awesome. You get to see some really cool stuff like this great egret. Look how he tucks his head back to his shoulders and his neck comes down along the bottom. Totally awesome. While all of the photographers were focusing on the birds down below, I watched this pair of wood storks. So you have wood stork A coming in and he hits the brakes. And then wood stork B comes flying in with some nice nesting material. So stork A, let's call him Frank. And stork B, let's call her Lisa. They meet up high in this tree and they have a moment. Look at them. Who would have ever thought that two wood storks would actually look like they love each other? I mean, look at them. They actually look like they care for each other. And look at their legs. You see all that white color? That's poop. They poop on their legs. 
Yeah, it's apparently how they keep their body temperature down. Who knew? And apparently pooping on your legs doesn't ruin the mood. There weren't very many chicks on my visit, but I did manage to find one family of egrets. Look at these birds. Here's the family picture. Three chicks, one adult. And then here's a few close-ups. Notice the skin color on these chicks. It's green. Now I wonder if that green color is some sort of natural camouflage to help the chicks blend in with their surroundings because they were in this really thick green vegetation. The birds are everywhere. And so are the photographers. A couple of more egrets posing with their impressive breeding plumage. You might have noticed in the uh, stats that I keep posting on all these images that my aperture is varying between 7.1 and 6.3. This is helping me get a wider depth of field and get more of the birds in focus, especially this last one here when the bird's wing is outstretched. Check out this cattle egret. It looks a little crazy and it looks like it's about to do a full-on belly flop right into a pool. This cattle egret is clearly pointing to the left. I guess maybe this was a private moment and it didn't want its picture taken. I watched the single cattle egret gathering nesting material for quite a while. It would fly away up into this palm tree and it would sit there for, I don't know, two or three minutes and it would pick through and it would finally find the perfect branch and then it would fly right back down maybe 15 feet in front of me and hand that branch to its mate in the nest and they would both make all kinds of noise. It was really funny to watch. And then off he would go again to get some more material. One of the great things about the way this place is set up is the sun is coming up behind you and shining right on this rookery and all of these birds are really, really busy flying towards you into the light. So you get some really, really good opportunities for capturing some awesome images of them in flight and carrying the nesting material back and forth. It's a really cool opportunity. This series of images was taken at just before 9 o'clock. I think it was about 10 till. And the sun had just climbed up over these trees behind me and was giving me lots of good light. Um, I also gave me lots of opportunity for some really interesting poses, as, as you can tell. And um, with a D500 being able to do 10 frames per second, you can really fire off a lot of shots and capture a lot of really great moments. A couple more good profile shots of that cattle egret showing off all that color. It was ducked back into these bushes and I could get really good shots from really close. And then this last shot was a great egret flying in for a landing. Wow, there's flamingos. I've always wanted to get pictures of these guys. Look. Up to this point, all the birds I've been showing have been actual wild birds. They just really like the environment that they've made at Gatorland. The flamingos, though, they're actual residents here. And it's not every day that you get to see a flamingo, so I'm going to start taking some pictures of these guys. They, uh, each one of them, too, it's, it's interesting as you see these pictures. They all seem to have like a different look or a different personality in each shot. Most of these shots are profile shots. And you can really see that personality in each shot. In these first couple of shots, I was using an aperture of f6.3, and I uh, bumped it to f8 to make sure I could get all of the birds in focus and to get a good depth of field. And I was also changing the exposure compensation quite a bit. I was experimenting because that the pink color of the flamingos was was being it was a little tricky to photograph so I was trying all different types of things to ensure that I got some good shots. I have my D500 set up to shoot JPEG and RAW images at the same time and I've noticed the JPEGs the red colors seem really really good but in the RAW files the reds are a little tricky to get looking right. Somebody's feeding the skaters but there's egrets riding on their backs. Look. Crazy. It was getting late in the day and the light was a little too harsh at this point for me, but I'm not going to pass up this opportunity. I mean, look at this, this egrets standing on this alligator's back. And then look at this one. It's surfing. I know surfing's popular in Florida, but come on. It's a white alligator. You think it's real? It's plastic. It's plastic. From a white alligator to a white peacock. Two things I've never seen before. I was able to capture some really good detail in the eye and some good reflections. What a cool looking bird.
I'm gonna leave this video with, yep, a picture of an alligator. Still pretty cool. There should be a little bumblebee in the upper left hand corner. Go ahead and click on that and subscribe to my channel. I got a lot of videos planned. If you like the video, click the thumbs up and always leave comments. It doesn't matter if it's good, bad, questions, whatever. I'll do my best to answer any questions and I love hearing what everybody thinks of the videos.